Hi guys, it's Beth from Bourbon Creek Crafts here with you all today. And today we are going to use the Sweet Christmas Paper Collection from Scrapping for Less to make some cute little treat holders for Christmas gifts, stocking stuffers, things like that. So I will insert a picture of the the whole paper collection here because I forgot to take a picture of that before I dove into it because I was very excited to play with it. But the one thing I love about this paper collection is that it has you know, like a, a fun little treat image on one side and then the back side is just kind of a, a normal design with Christmas colors. So plaid, this is like a little chevron, there's gingham, and then on some of them, like there's a more of a solid color candy cane. So I just thought that was really fun and this would be perfect for some treat holders. So I have two different kinds that I'm going to show you today. But the first thing I did is I pulled out a Reindeer Game stamp set from Scrapping for Less, which was in a, an old Flavor of the Month kit, I believe is how I got this one. And I decided to use this little elf and I stamped a bunch and went ahead and colored a bunch of them up just doing some basic oh, focus, some basic coloring, nothing fancy since I knew I was doing a bunch of these. And so I got that done and out of the way and then I could start on my treat holders. So there are different variations of both of these out there, but I was just going to show you how I made mine. The first one, it's just like this little, I think they call it a diaper fold pocket. And it's big enough that you can fit a couple bags of tea or what I plan to put in them is some Ghirardelli squares. And I will wait to buy mine until closer to Christmas time just so they're, they're more fresh. But two Ghirardelli squares will also fit in here, I believe. And then the other one is just this double pocket holder. And again, you can fit a bag of tea on both sides or some Ghirardelli squares would fit in here as well. And both of these, the great thing about both of these is there's no cutting involved. It uses the full six by six piece of paper, which I love. So it doesn't generate scraps. So that is perfect. So let's go ahead and get started on making these and I will switch over to a voiceover for this part so that I can speed it up just a little bit. It turns out I didn't have to speed this part up much at all because both of these pockets went pretty quickly. I'm starting with the diaper fold pocket and you just take your six by six piece, figure out what you want on the inside peeking out if you have double sided paper and fold it in half diagonally. And then on that top layer, you're gonna take the top point and pull it down towards that flat middle fold. And then that creates a score line almost so that whenever you, you can take those two side points and you're gonna fold them in and so that their flat sides are flush against that, that fold line you made from folding the top down, if that made sense. It's hard for me to explain that part. And now you have your little pocket. And a lot of people say you don't even have to have adhesive here, but I just like to, to kind of make it a flat surface for me to add some embellishment to. So I just use some art glitter glue to fold that front flap down and am letting that dry for a moment. I'm adding some more art glitter glue to the back of one of the elves that I already colored and fussy cut. And I also, went ahead and punched some white scallop circles out of some cardstock that I had on hand. And I'm just adding some art glitter glue to the back of that as well. And then I just have to add that to the front of the pocket. And you can embellish these with whatever you want, really. I just know I am going to probably be selling these at craft shows or little handmade boutiques. And so since you can't they don't sell for a whole lot, so I just didn't want to put a whole lot of embellishment on them if I know I'm not going to get that, you know, money back out of them from a business standpoint. Anyway, so I'm moving on to the double fold pocket, and again, you're going to start the exact same way. Figure out which side you want facing out. Fold it in half diagonally, 
And you are gonna need a scoring tool of some sort here because you wanna take that center line and you're gonna score at half an inch out on either side of that center score line. And then you're gonna turn it a quarter of a turn and go score perpendicular to those center score lines at two and three quarters inches on both sides. And I'm just lining mine up with, uh, I think, the three inch line there and then making sure I'm, my point is up against the two and three quarters line, so. Now I'm just folding up all of those score lines. And then the very first center fold line that you made is going to become a mountain fold. And then the two lines you made on either side of that are going to become valley folds and that's what creates that gusset there like in the center of the the holder kind of like an accordion effect and so this one really doesn't require any glue but i am going to secure the top together with some ribbon and i'm just using my crocodile to punch a hole through both layers there at right there at the very top. And I have some red ribbon from my stash and I'm just gonna trim off a little bit so that I can create kind of like a little V. I'm threading one side through and I will need to trim. I have a little frayed in there so I will have to trim up that. But I'm also going to add a little dot of art glitter glue here on the ribbon just to help hold it together. I'm going to end up actually securing the ribbon with some baker's twine, but the glue just kind of helps hold it in place while I'm getting the baker's twine tied. And it's hard to tell, but that is green and white baker's twine that I'm using. And I'm going to tie a double knot, and that kind of bunches the ribbon up there right at the top of the point of the holder. And I'm doing <laughs> the one-handed tie right there while I'm trying to hold my, my knot, my initial knot together. And then I'm just going to tie a quick bow. and trim up my ends. Now sometimes, depending on what I'm, I'm using, if I'm using more ribbon or baker's twine, sometimes I may just leave a knot, like do a knot there, a double knot instead of a bow. So it all just depends on what you're feeling like, what you're going for. I'm gonna use another one of those elves that I co colored up, put him on that scallop circle. Now when you're adding your embellishments to the front of these pockets, keep in mind that V fold there on the front. You wanna make sure you're only putting your adhesive where it's gonna to touch that front V fold. You can see I kind of did a little V at the bottom of my scallop circle. And that's just because you wanna make sure you don't put your adhesive where it could touch the inside of the pocket, otherwise your pocket won't open. And so now our second pocket's done. And I sped this up, this video up about one and a half times or this process up about one and a half times, but I, it really only took me about nine minutes to make both of these pockets. So if you're looking to mass produce something for teacher's gifts, coworker gifts, or just stocking stuffers for kids, grandkids, or craft show items, these are awesome for that because you can definitely crank them out and they're super fun and cute. So I hope you guys got some inspiration for this and enjoyed today's project. There will be a link to this paper collection in the description box below. And again, the blog post will be linked below that has the dimensions and score lines listed for you. So thanks so much for your time today, guys. Have a crafty day.